First Block is brought to you in part by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Visit thinkfordfirst.com. Ask anyone who knows Onita Jackson, and that's a lot of people. They'll tell you it's never a quiet moment when Onita's around. There was a time when anyone could read her opinions in her O Street column in the Detroit Free Press and her popular blog. Then something happened on this bridge that led Onita toward what some call an unusual career choice, but she says is her second dream. You never know what might happen when Onita Jackson is around. I learned that right away. Uh, I've never gotten this before, thank yeah. you. Yeah, loosen up, no. loosen up. Most people don't throw a party to commemorate an event that probably wasn't their finest hour. Hey, y'all! Onita is not most people. She came to Detroit 12 years ago at age 32 and with a young son in tow for a free press internship. The move made sense to the Howard University English major who treasures the written word. Semicolons are serious, okay? I'm getting a semicolon tattoo. If one writing well is the Bible, then Onita is a disciple and an evangelist. Cattle, okay? We raise questions like cattle, got it? Questions are raised, not begged. Mom, my work here is finished. I'm gone. Onita guest lectures to English classes like this one at Wayne State. She shares her journey from intern to copy editor to columnist, satirist, social commentator, and beyond. I'm taking time out of cab driving right now to do a lecture. I'm a freaking cab driver. Walks to Bill Isle often help her gather her thoughts. Let's talk about your outfit. What do you have on here? Oh, I'm wearing a Venus speaker coat and Onita Jackson scarf, but I think you really wanted to talk about my checker socks, right? Spend even a few minutes with Onita, and it becomes clear she has her own style in just about every way. Let's talk about what you, you're kind of known for around town. Uh, As a, a cab park, driver. Park Writer. bench. And you had a pen. Mother. And you wrote your name, and it was caught kinda, kinda, on camera. Kind of. It was captured, not caught. Okay. Oh, you want to know about me and my green pen? <laughs> I want to know about the green pen. <laughs> the green pen incident happened May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, 2010, when Onita still worked for the newspaper. I was at a public event, the grand opening of the Bagley Pedestrian Bridge, and I wrote my name on a bench in green pen. For what? Uh, because I reverted to my childhood. Yeah, I'm a grown woman, but I'm a big kid. People who know me are like, a lot of people are like, okay, that sounded like Onita. But what happened was there was an MDOT camera there, and I exist in my own world, in my own head. So a lot of times when I was writing or when I do write, it's just me writing. I mean, I wasn't writing, going around writing as, oh, I'm a columnist writing. I just see things strike me as you asked me before, just write. And I write, <laughs> and write, and write, and write. And there was an end out camera standing right there. And when I looked up, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And, but what I did not know, the camera kept following me. Apparently there was um, people who were spray painting the beautiful bridge all over. And the Detroit News was doing a story on it. The Old Street column was temporarily suspended and Onita started editing again. She quit the free press late last year to observe Metro Detroit from a new vantage point the driver's seat of a checkered cab. Well, I think there's sometimes something to be smile about, so yeah. I'm glad it's sunshiny and not pouring down rain. How's that? Uh, I rather have rain. You know what? I'm gonna sit up here and be quiet is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Drive this cab. <laughs> yeah, Michigan needs to rain. Oh, oh it's gonna rain. Oh, it's going to rain. It's, it is Detroit. There'll be plenty of rain. And I want you to think of me so when it rains. Driving a taxi in Detroit means a woman who already knows just about everyone meets even more people, and there is no telling who the next fare may be. But driving can also be trying and tough. The first question people often ask is, do you feel safe? We all know the risks. Cab driving is one of the most dangerous jobs. Four cab drivers have been killed since I began driving seven months ago. That ain't cool. Not you cool don't want to, no, no, no. And I, I can take you, I can take you through the four, okay? The first one was two weeks after I started driving. The second one, two weeks later, I was in tears. I woke up, breaking news, channel four, a cab driver has been killed. I lost it. I lost it completely. One of my brethren had been killed. I lost my mind. The third one, I was about to take somebody out. But this last one, now I'm going down to, I'm going to see the mayor. He knows who I am. I'm going to see somebody because you know what I need? I need police officers on the streets. I'm a cab driver and I see what's going on in the streets. When I go to New York, back to my second home, nothing but police officers, all right? P police presence is a deterrent, all right? 
Some customers miss the bus and don't have money to take a cab, right? So they don't tip. This is not a commentary on tipping. It's a commentary on if public transportation worked better, all right, they wouldn't have to get in my cab. That's not making me sad. It's me wishing and embracing and identifying with them because I used to take the bus too. And in real cities, yes, real cities, public transportation works well. Hold up, who tried to holler at, who asked me if I dated white dudes? Yeah, yeah it was you? Yeah. Okay, you didn't call me. Well, not yet. Well, I didn't want to, you know, you don't want to, I didn't want to be overbearing, you know? Just, like, no, it, the next when, day. as soon as you got the yes, that was your cue to proceed, man, I said yes. So back to that party. Onita throws a Cinco de Mayo bash every year in part to mark the anniversary of her green pin learning experience. Ain't nobody got time for that. Party on, dudes. And because a couple careers aren't enough, Onita designed a t-shirt that allows Detroiters to check themselves. Casual wear as commentary, of course. Writing a column, I was really angry about this idea. These, oh, I'm from Gross Eel. Oh, I'm from Gross Point. Oh, I'm from Farmington. The idea behind the shirt is we're all Detroiters. And I'm specifically speaking about people who consider themselves Detroiters. If you don't, the shirt's not for you. But it doesn't matter where you're from, we're all Detroiters. And that was the idea. And that shirt does really well. Okay, thank you. What do you want people to take away from you when they get out of your cab? When people get out of my cab, they've gotten the best cab ride. Yeah, well, first of all, you don't have a cab ride. When you get in my cab, you have an experience, okay? Onita is writing a book based on the stories she gathers of driving her cab. I've been in Detroit for about six months now. I know it's a complicated region, but sometimes the stories of a few individuals can bring out the beauty of a complex and colorful place. Thanks for watching First Block.